Hey guys, welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Saturday the 17th of June 2018 and I'm basically already cracking up because I cannot record an intro today. Every single time. I just cannot do it. But maybe we'll get through it now. So, this is a knitting podcast. I'm so glad you're joining in. If you're watching for the very first time, welcome to Crazy Land. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much um, for those of you who come back every week. And um, to think that some of you have been following me for years by now, that's just crazy. So, thank you so much for tuning in today. Um, like, I said, like I said, this is supposed to be a knitting podcast. Um, I will say about this episode that A, I am not feeling 100% and B, I just got up and C, I just had my very first sip of coffee for the day. So expect some craziness, but we'll just try to get through it. Um, it is Saturday morning, like I said, um, but this was the only opportunity I knew I was going to have to record an episode this week. And I really did want to get an episode out because A, I have a lot of stuff to show you, B, apparently I like to list things today and C, Next weekend will be the last time I'll be able to record a proper podcast before we go on holiday. So there we go. You can just <laughs> hopefully deal with it. I hope you have some knitting to keep you company and then you can just watch me ramble on about things, mostly sock knitting for the next 45 minutes or so. Yeah, wow, I'm so out of breath. I'm terribly out of it today. Um, I don't know what's going on ever since last night I've not really been feeling that great and I have a feeling it's just exhaustion and too much work rather than me actually being ill but it's making me a little bit more loopy than usual. Um, so anyways we will just jump right in with some knitting and first of all of course I have some admin to talk about, some knit alongs, I have a prize winner to announce. Followed by finished objects, works in progress, um, and then some acquisitions that dropped off on my doorstep. So in terms of admin, first of all, we have two knit alongs running. We have the Couch and Crackers Socks knit along, which is a knit along for my first ever sock design. And that knit along is making me so happy just because I love seeing everyone's um, pairs or single socks out of my design. I think as a designer, which I wouldn't really call myself, but as someone who occasionally designs patterns, just seeing someone knit them up is amazing and it brings me so much joy. So that is running until the end of June. You don't have to finish, um, just cast on, um, show us what you're working on. We have one chat of thread in the Ravelry group, which is the Happy Knitting Podcast group. The group is as always linked below the video and I would love for you guys to join in. Um, the second knit along that we have running is the Summer Stash Down and that's running until the end of August and the idea is to just use your stash, knit from your stash, maybe get a couple of skeins out, maybe get a couple of old skeins out that have been just marinating in your stash for years and yeah, let's just have some fun. So again, I've talked about this in the past, I don't want to go through it like a million times but there are more details in the chatter thread and there is also an FO thread. And last week I already hinted that I was going to do like a surprise drawing sometime soon and I have just done that. So before I talk about who won, I'll show you the prize. Um, the prize for this time is um, this beautiful skein of yarn. This is a really, really soft yarn. This is by Wild About Yarn down, down Under. So it's from Australia and Australia always holds a special place in my heart because I spent quite a bit of time there when I was younger. Um, so um, the owner of the shop is Lou, this is her card, she has been very generous to the podcast before and this gain of yarn she sent me a while ago for a giveaway, it is called Love You To The Stars And Back and it is a 85% extra fine merino, 15% uh, nylon fingering weight yarn and it's really 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 soft. Not sure if you can see the speckles in here. I think it's a really pretty skein. I kind of don't want to give it away, but of course I will. So for this skein of yarn, I drew from the chatter thread. Um, I always say um, use the chatter thread if you don't don't think you'll be able to finish things. 
and I too rarely actually draw prizes, but this time I drew a prize. Um, I just drew it with, um, with random.org um, and the time that I drew um, there were 112 entries. And the winner is number 29, who is Lupi Care, and that is Caroline from Ohio. So congratulations Caroline, you have won the skein of yarn. Please get in touch with me um, through Ravelry. Uh, my name is Vipfi, which is W-U-E-P-F-I. Um, send me your full name and address and I will send this skein out to you. I will say, um, say um, I'm here for another 10 days, so if you hurry up um, and see this in time, I will try to send it out before the holiday. If not, it'll just have to wait. But as long as you get in touch with me within the next two or three weeks, this skein is definitely reserved for you. So that is the surprise drawing for now. Of course, the knit along will continue until the end of August. So I will be definitely drawing more prizes at the end of August and who knows, maybe before then as well. We'll just see how it goes. So yeah, I think that is enough admin and knit along talk for now. So let's talk about some finished objects because you guys, I have one and it's a big one. Da, da, da. I have finished my fading point show by Hohi Locatelli. So you guys must be so sick of it, I am too, because I have been working on this thing since April and it's now June and I don't usually work on things that long. But this is a five skein show, so that does explain it kind of. So this is going to be hard to show you guys as well, but the general idea is um, it's this huge faded rectangular wrap, so it kind of goes like this and like this and it never ends and it's really huge. So it is done you guys. Last week I showed it to you, I was in, um, at the point where I was joining the two middle sides and I just raced through that. I just pushed myself because I really just wanted to have this thing finished. And now I have, and I'm super, super proud of it. I love the design. I don't think I will ever knit it again because it was just so much knitting. <laughs> but I do love the finished end result. I'm not really sure if I'm going to be using it as a blanket or actually as a shawl. It's been super hot, so I haven't really been even trying it on. But um, it's definitely going to be a useful accessory either way. I followed the pattern except I used a 3.5 millimeter US size 4 needle um, and I will go through the yarns once more. So the first one, this dark one, is, um, yeah I should know that, Araucania a Botany Lace in a colorway that only has a number but I have listed it in my project page. Then I faded into this color, which is very similar but lighter. This is by Family Tree Yarns in the Bunny Rabbit colorway, which I really, really enjoyed this yarn. Um, this is Dreamin Colors Mushi um, Cashmere, I think. It's an MCN yarn, and I think the colorway is Rose Petals, but I'm not quite sure. This. Um, sort of lightly speckled yarn is by Herbstblatt Regina in the, her um, Stellina base in the speckled egg colorway or speckled eggs colorway that I got in a D stash and this is just some undyed merino 100% merino yarn from Zauberwiese they once sold their undyed skeins um, and I just picked some up but I must say I really didn't like working with this um, specific yarn base because it was super super splitty and it does create a, f a beautiful fabric. It's definitely, I, th I, I think it's a great yarn, but just for me personally to knit with it, I didn't really enjoy it, but I do know that it would be great for actually wearing it as a garment. So that is my five colors. Um, I don't know what else to tell you guys. I finished it. I wove in all of my ends, which was a lot of ends. Um, and I haven't blocked it and first of all I thought well I need to block it before I podcast but then I don't think I'm going to block it because I think there is a really really big place for blocking in the knitting world and for most things it is really important to do block but I don't like to just block everything just because it feels like you have to and this is a rectangular girder stitch hole so if you block it this thing is going to grow 
and it's already huge i don't really want it to grow and it already holds the shape quite nicely there is nothing wrong with the shape as it is um, i mean sooner or later i'm going to have to wash it anyways but i do like my girder stitch squishy so i'm going to leave it unblocked for now and save myself a ton of work and i'm happy with this just as it is so maybe at some point when it gets co cooler i'm going to bring this out again and show it to you worn but right now it's just too warm to really play with it too much but i'm super super happy to have this off the needles and also this is a huge summer stash down win for me because this is five skeins out of my stash four of which were kind of old stash and i didn't really have plans for them so now it is out of the stash into a big project and i'm really really excited about this so yeah that is that let me have some coffee and then we will work our way into works in progress it feels really weird to not have any finished socks like when i prepared for this podcast even though preparing is a huge exaggeration <laughs> anyways when i got ready to podcast i just brought out my sock blockers because i always have socks to show you guys and then i realized it didn't actually finish any but i mean that's fine it's only been six days since I last podcast anyways. So um, let us just talk about knitting and show it to you instead of just waffling on. What's in here? Oh yeah, in here I have my Mercury socks. Okay, for this I could actually need, actually use a sock blocker. Um, so I didn't show these to you last week because I hadn't really worked on them. But I am knitting some Mercury socks, um, which is a free pattern by Kim Drota. Um, and I have finished my first sock. So let me just show you how unprepared I am. Um, so I realized I'm using a lacy pattern on a very crazy yarn, but I just thought it would be fun. And that's exactly how it turned out and so I don't really care that it's not the perfect pattern for the yarn. I think it works. So this is the first sock that I have finished. You can see it's a super colorful yarn and I just wanted to have some sort of fun patterning and I wanted to do something different than my blueberry waffles or Hermione's everyday socks that I've done so many times. So I decided to do the Mercury socks and I really really like them. I use the fish lips kiss heel and I'm using two small sock blockers which is why it looks weird but they actually fit really well it's just the size of the sock blocker is all wrong and so I have the first sock finished and I have the cuff of the second sock and so now I just need to get into the patterning I wanted to do that last night but we were watching the world cup and there is no way I'm knitting a pattern sock in an intense soccer game that just doesn't work so there we are, but I'm happy to have made some progress. Um, the yarn that I'm using for this is a German indie dyed yarn called Tausendschön Wolle. Um, this was one of the very first indie dyed yarns that I've ever bought from this, uh, not this exact skein, but this company. And this is in their speckled series, but I don't think they have repeatable colorways, or at least the speckled ones aren't. So it's just a one-off, but I think it's a really fun colorway. It's just a really nice um, merino and nylon base as well and like many German sock yarns this is very affordable and I think it's a really good sort of basic sock yarn. So that is that. That is my first sock whip. I have a couple of course. Um, next up. Oh my gosh. I'm just dropping stuff everywhere. Um, I have a new sock cast on, which I kind of hinted at last week. Um, and this is a pair of socks for my boyfriend Kai. So last week I got some new yarn from Socks Yeah, because I'm in their Neutrals and Neons club. So if you don't want to be spoiled, please look away, because I'm going to show the Dune club, but I think it's been out for like three weeks. So one colorway that was in there was this neon green, which is called Krypton in Socks here, which is a sock yarn by Rachel Coopy of Coop Knits. And I said I was going to combine it with another neutral and knit some crazy socks for Kai. So the second skein that I um, brought out is this one. This is called Iolite. And I think this is one of their just normal 
colorways that they've had for a while and I have knit a sock. I have started knitting a sock. So Kai wanted some crazy neon socks and what I'm doing is I'm doing I'm going to do sort of opposite socks. So the first sock is starts with a neon green, the stripes and then the blue. And then for the, se for the second sock I'm going to turn it around and do the exact opposite. So um, first of all let me just show you what I've done. The green is super bright and I really really love it. Then I just did like two row stripes. And last night, actually while watching the World Cup, I put in the heel because I had no vanilla knitting. So I just got through it, which was kind of adventurous, but it worked out. And now I'm just working on the foot. I'm probably going to do at least the toe in the green, but most likely I think I actually want to do sort of like more than just the toe in the green. Maybe just start the green a little bit, little bit earlier. I think that'll be a really neat sort of effect. Um, so since these socks are for Kai, I'm doing 68 stitches on a US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needle. And let me just say how much I love this yarn. This is my first time knitting with Socks here yarn and it is beautiful. It is, I, I can't really describe it, but it just creates such a beautiful fabric. Um, it's a perfect sort of soft yet not plasticky feel. It doesn't feel like a superwash yarn even though it is. And it's just a joy to knit with. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it just it creates this beautiful stunning fabric. I'm really really impressed by this. Um, I really hope that Kai won't destroy these. I have no idea how these are going to wear, but if they do wear nicely I think this might be my new favorite yarn. I'm actually already planning to knit a swatch on bigger needles out of the leftovers from these socks, if I have any, because right now I feel like this would be the perfect yarn for sweaters for me. So I'm going to knit a swatch in like a 3.5mm needle and watch it, wash it and see how it feels on bigger needles. And if it does, then I will throw all of my money there because I just love this yarn. I'm really, really impressed by it. And now that sounds like I'm doing advertising, which I'm not. I'm not sponsored. I'm not getting money. I'm not getting anything. I don't even know Rachel Kupi. I just think this yarn is gorgeous. So these are the socks for Kai. He really likes them. And yeah, I think it's fun. I'm, I, I want to do sort of like more like these kind of crazy socks for him in the future rather than just using variegated yarns. And I have a book that I'll show you later, which I think will be very helpful in that as well. So these are those socks and now they're at a perfect vanilla place so I think I'm going to leave them there until tomorrow until the next soccer game that I'm going to watch which is of course the Germany game. Yes there is going to be soccer talk I'm so sorry if you're not into soccer. soccer. Um, but these are going to be my World Cup knitting for the next match and then hopefully I'll be ready for the toe and I really need to be better prepared for those matches and have some Vanilla knitting ready where I just need to knit in the round and not do a heel, not do ribbing, not do toes. All right, you totally wanted to know that, didn't you? So, next up, um, let's just stay on the topic of socks. I have one more, and quite frankly, I have no idea what's in here. Oh yeah, of course, I have my sock blank socks. Um... So you might remember this sock blank um, is from Sandra of Sandra's Craftfulness. Um, she donated um, quite a lot of yarn, including a couple of sock blanks for the sock blankathon. And I gave two of the sock blanks away and kept one for myself and I decided to cast it on. So that is what I have done. I think I showed these to you last week. This is her 25% 75 uh, merino, 25% nylon base. It does not have a color, colorway name, but I can show you her logo. So there you go. And I have one finished sock. So I am doing vanilla socks because I like to do my sock blanks, just plain stock in it. And we had this issue last week where it kind of blows out and it's a bit, little bit lighter than it really is in real life. But this is the first sock. I knitted cuff down as usual. I did a fish lips kiss heel. I did a relatively long leg, 
which I tend to do for sock lengths because I just think they're a little bit special and they deserve longer lengths. And yeah, what can I tell you about this? I knit this on 64 stitches, US size 1, 2.25 millimeter needle. I took this on my last business trip to Nuremberg and I was just past the hill when I um, left and then I had a very, very stressful hotel night and I committed to some stress knitting and by the end of the night I was ready for the toe so then when I got home I just finished the toe and the first sock is done and I should really get the second one cast on and then they will be perfect World Cup knitting as well. Yes, my mind revolves around the World Cup. I am so sorry. But anyways, I really love how this sock blank knit up. Um, it's probably my most subtle sock blank that I've ever knit with. Like, it does give the sort of, sort of sock blank effect that is different to when you have normally dyed yarn, but it's still a very cohesive um, look in terms of the color, and I really like it. What I especially like, I'm not sure if you can tell, but there are these like flecks of yellow with the purple and this combination of purple and yellow and brown just kills me. Let's see. Mm. That's sort of a better representation of the yarn. It's really beautiful anyways. I think the second sock is going to be much lighter because the sock blank is very light compared to the first half. But I don't really care and I think it's going to be beautiful anyways. Or well, either way, it doesn't even mean that it's anything worse. So, um, I was going to say that is it for works in progress, but it's not. My last work in progress is also living in an acquisition. Because you guys, you guys, I got um, this new project bag. This is a cube bag by Thimble and Thread Makes, who is Tracy. She's in the UK. And I am so excited about this. And this is going to sound crazy, but this is my first ever project bag that I bought myself. Because I know I'm super, super lucky that I have amazing friends and also I'm friends of the podcast who have sent me things. So I have quite a few um, project bags and I do love all of them. But I've never actually went out and got a knitting project bag and just ordered it and picked it myself. and. This was the first one where I was like, I totally just need this. So um, I think most of you will probably have seen them. They're sort of like these canvas styles ba style bags with just a drawstring, a really sturdy drawstring. Um, Tracy makes them in quite a few different colors and you can also get different linings. But I chose the mustard color. And you guys, can you see how huge this bag is? I'm not sure if she has different sizes, I just saw large and I went for it because I really wanted another sweater bucket and I love this thing. I put my three pins that I have on here, I'm not a huge pin collector even though I do see, I do see the charm of it and I could see myself falling down that rabbit hole but so far that hasn't happen happened. Um, the lining that I got um, is the grey. I didn't know which one, I just told Gracie, please don't give me orange or olive because I didn't really want that. Um, but I was happy to be, to be surprised with any of the other colors. And I am so happy with this. I unwrapped it when I got back on Thursday night and I didn't really have time to knit yesterday because it was crazy busy. But every time I saw my project bag just hanging around in the apartment, it just made me so happy. So that just completely went off on an acquisitions tangent. Let's get back to the project that is living in here because I immediately had to put something in here. And that is my Sipila sweater. Once again, it is not, doesn't have any needles attached to it, but it's also not finished. Um, but I have finished the first sleeve. So I did three quarter length sleeves on this sweater. I should say this is the Sipila sweater by Caitlin Hunter of Boyland Knitworks. Um, I'm using Drops Flora. I used 3.5 millimeter US size 4 needles. I used the color work chart and then kind of did my own thing. So I've done my own body decreases and ribbing. And I did the same thing for the sleeves. So I am omitted the entire color work on the sleeves made up my own decreases. I think I decreased every nine rows. 
down to about 50 stitches and then did my ribbing over 48 stitches, all of which I will put in my um, project page notes later. So my first sleeve is done. Now I just need to do the same thing once more and then the sweater will be finished. And I'm very excited about that. Um, I tried this on a couple of times and this might be one of the best fitting beautiful sweaters that I've ever knit. I am really, really happy with the fit of this one. It is just perfect. It is a tiny bit oversized, so it's super chill, it's relaxed, but it looks really, really nice and I, I really love it. I was wearing it the other day because I was trying it on and I didn't want to take it off again. And Kai walked in and he was like, wow, that sweater is really nice. And that sort of thing doesn't really come from Kai. So I am really impressed with that and yeah, I think it's a really good pattern. I blame it on the pattern, not on my knitting skills. But yeah, very happy with this and also very happy with the fact that this too is nearing the end and it will be done before we go on holidays. Yay! I'm not sure, I kind of want to cast on my ne next sweater as soon as I finish this and I really want to cast on my shoe sui shrug, which I already have the yarn ready for, it's actually lying right there. Um, but then maybe I should not cast on a big sweater project before we go on holiday because I don't really see myself carrying it around. But we will see. So uh, that is it for my knitting works in progress. And I feel like there's fluff everywhere and I'm itching everywhere. Sorry about that. This is definitely not, not the most organized podcast episode anyway, so we'll just get through it. So now let's move on to acquisitions. And you guys, I'll keep the most exciting thing for last, the most unexpected thing. Um, one thing that I purchased, I think two weeks ago, we were, <laughs> we were actually on a car trip across Germany and as you do, I was on Instagram because Kai was driving and then this yarn shop had a 50% off sale of some of their hedgehog fibers. And I was like, I don't care what I said about not buying yarn, I'm buying that. So um, I got, um, they was, I think they were selling um, some certain qualities of um, hedgehog fibers that they weren't going to stock anymore. And I should really tell you the name of the store. I have a feeling I have no idea what it is. Oh, hang on, maybe it's here. Yes. This is the name, it's a German online yarn shop. I haven't ordered from them before, but I follow them on Instagram and I saw that I had a sale. And so I just quickly went on there and I think they had a couple of skeins of Hedgehog Fibers DK, a couple of Silky Singles and I think Aran Weight, and it was 50% off. So I was like, I'm not passing that up. So I snagged one skein of Hedgehog DK, which I've never tried before. And I got this beautiful skein of yarn. This all kind of got decided in a matter of minutes and I could not be happy with this. This is Merino DK, so it has 100% merino yarn, 200 meters per 115 grams, so it's quite a generous skein. And the colorway is called Naive. And I mean, is there a color that is more me than that? Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, I've also had it lying on my desk all week and keep touching it, and it's just a beautiful yarn. I kind of want to knit, um, like a hat version of my sock pattern, my couch and crackers with this because I think this would be really fun. And I also kind of want to knit, um, I want to knit more with DK anyways. I've slowly been collecting single skeins of DK and I kind of wanted more hats, but at the same time I dream of DK brioche shawls. So I actually have one skein in my stash that would go really nicely with this. And I mean, DK brioche just sounds perfect, doesn't it? So this will become something fun either way and I love it. Um, the second thing that showed up is a book that I got in a D-stash. And oh my gosh, Anna, I still haven't even thanked you for 
or told you that it arrived, but it has. And by the time you watch this, I will probably have sent you in a message as well. But um, there's this book that I have been wanting to get forever anyways. And then my friend Anna, um, she was de-stashing a couple of books. So I bought this one from her. And this is the socks book. It is a German book. To be honest, I don't even know if they have it in English. I should have researched, but I'm just going to show it to you and then you can research yourself. But it's the Socks book with two X's. It's by Top, which is the publishing company. And you can already see on the cover what it's about. It's 26 um, sock patterns for color work and just really simple color work that you can combine to make really fun socks. And this comes perfectly at the perfect time because I want to get more into like color work socks and just knitting with sort of like leftovers and I think this will be perfect. So when you open it up, hang on, I should do it properly. Dun, dun, dun. So you open it up and you see some of the samples and aren't they just beautiful? And there are more. And more. And you can see sort of like the style. They are very, very simple color work designs. Sometimes they use two colors, sometimes they use three or even four. And it's basically also a bit of a recipe where you can just then combine different yarns and different parts of different patterns and just make your own sort of socks. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but there are a lot of them that I really like. And even Kai, who doesn't really love color work things, he really liked them. Um, how do I do this without showing you the pattern? This is one that I really think is so much fun. It's very busy color work. Probably not Kai's thing. Um, These ones, I think they're super, super cool. I really like these. I like the effect that you have on these. So you can see some of them, they have all over color work. Sometimes they just have like a color work leg or a color work foot, color work foot which again, I think is really handy. Um, I want to show you one more, which one was it? They are also more so like traditional ones. Dum -dum -dum. It's only a matter of hours. I promise. And I really like some of the colors that they've used as well. Like, especially because at the end, they then show you some of the samples knit in different colors and they give you just so many ideas of what you can do. So this is another one of their sort of piles of different socks. And I also like the photography in these. I think I really like this book. So yeah, if you're in Germany, I could only recommend this book and I will try to find out or maybe someone of you. Some of you already know this is also available in English. Um, I think I'm going to use this a lot and I'm also kind of thinking up a new knit along or at least a personal challenge that I might turn into a knit along regarding these kinds of easy color work socks. So if you have any ideas or recommendations, do let me know. So that was supposed to be it for acquisitions. And then I got home and there were two packages lying they're waiting for me. First one was the book and the second one had the label from Das Mondschaft and I was really confused. <clears throat> so I kind of went to Kai and was like, hang on, you ordered me something? Did, did you like surprise me with anything? Because I know I didn't order anything from her. And Kai was like, seriously, I didn't. Um, and then I thought of my friend Marion because we had been talking about the Mondschaft and Yarn Club and I was like, Maybe something happened there, but I have no idea. So I ripped open the package and lo and behold, um, Sabrina, who is the owner and dyer behind Das Mondschaf, she just sent me a surprise package because I had been supporting her yarn and I guess just raving on about it for quite a while because I think I've been a fan of her yarns pretty early on. And so she just decided to send me a surprise package, which you guys, I could not believe it. Like, that just still doesn't compute. But anyways, that is just so nice. And I am so excited by this. And I didn't expect that. I know I get sent a lot of things and I'm really lucky. But I never expect anything. And 
especially when I just rave on about things that I like. I don't expect the owners of the shops to even realize or notice or you know reward me for anything I don't do any advertising it's just my personal ramblings but you guys you guys want to see what she sent me right so first of all she sent me two mini skeins of okay, Aurora base. I can't, I can't <laughs> she sent me two skeins mini skeins of her singles base um, this one is the Earl Grey colorway, and this one is the Childlike Empress colorway, which I do think I have the pink one on, um, sock yarn, because, I mean, just look at the color, obviously I have to have that. Um, but I've never seen her single space before, and it's really lovely, and I have all these ideas for, like, color pop, um, mini skein projects, so these will be perfect for that. And they are 20 gram minis. This is their logo, by the way. So these are just beautiful. And then, you guys, I can't believe it. But Sabrina sent me a sock blank. So I think usually she has um, single strand sock blanks in her shop, even though I don't know. But I think she does. But this is a double strand sock blank. So if you don't know what it is. It is a, basically a piece of knitted fabric that you then unravel to knit with it, like the sock that I showed you before, except for this one, it's two strands of yarn to held together, which means that if you knit these up, you will get two identical socks, which is really neat. And I've never used um, this kind of sock plank before, so I'm really excited. So she just sent me this. I don't think it has a colorway name. Um, it is in her 7525 merino nylon sock base. It is beautifully um, soft. And these colors, aren't they just so fun? I especially love this bright magenta pink within the red. I think this is going to be so beautiful. And again, this was lying on my desk when I was working from home yesterday. And I kind of wanted to cast on immediately. Um, I haven't knit from a sec uh, double strand sock blank before and while I, th I do think it's totally possible I think for the first time ever I do want to unravel this and just knit and uh, make two balls of yarn and then I can just knit two at, uh, two at a time socks really easily. So I again I kind of want to do it right away but I don't know if I want to cast this on right away. So we'll see how that goes, but Sabrina, thank you so much. This was really not necessary and not expected, and I love it. So that was very unexpected, and that does conclude my acquisitions after all. So that is also it in terms of the knitting content. So if you're only here for the knitting, then I will see you next week. And if you do want to stick around, um, I will just ramble on about life I guess so um oh my gosh it has been so busy um I, it's about 10 days since we until, until we go away and as usual before the holidays just everything happens all at once and this morning I woke up at seven o'clock and just kind of lay in bed for an hour thinking about how I was going to do all the work and thinking about work and realizing that is not healthy but things have been going really, really well. It sounds like I'm complaining, but I'm not. It's been really busy, but really busy in a good way. I'm traveling a lot for work. I've been traveling. Oh, I'm traveling pretty much every week at the moment, which again is intense. But it's also really, really fun. Um, so this week I went to Nuremberg, which I love going to Nuremberg or Nuremberg, as we say in Germany. It's a city relatively close to where I grew up. And I have lots of good memories attached to that city. I think probably if you ask me um, if I could move in, uh, to any city in Germany, that would be the one that I would want to live at. So it was. I always loved going back there and our colleagues there are really nice as well. Well, my colleagues are nice everywhere. I, I have to be fair. Anyways, you guys don't want to hear about that. Anyways, I was there. It was fun. And... Um, What's especially fun is that I will be back there again in two weeks and a couple of people and I have organized or um, I, uh, we, are on, we are planning to organize a little knit night in Nuremberg. So if you are one of those people who lives there and would like to participate, 
please shoot me a message. Um, I have been organizing this through Instagram, so I'm probably going to start an Instagram group message just because I need to keep it simple. So if you are one of those people and you would like to be um, included just in the planning, um, do let me know. Just do get in touch in, on Instagram. I am the Happy Knitting Podcast. And then I will just add you to that conversation. I'm planning to keep this very, very relaxed because honestly, when I'm traveling for work, I can never 100% say when I'm going to be where things just tend to be crazy. So we need to account for that. But I think it would be really, really fun, especially since I'm going to be there every two or three weeks now. So we'll see how that goes. Um, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, besides that, I don't really know what to tell you guys. The week has been crazy busy and it's probably going to stay that busy until we go away. But um, it's been fun. There's like bad, stressful, busy and then there's good, stressful, busy and that's where I'm at the moment. Um, only hindered by the fact that I have been having sort of like eye problems which have been really, really annoying, especially when you're working in front of a computer. Um, what else? Now it's Saturday. The reason why I'm recording this morning is because my sister, my middle sister, who is 18 now, she is visiting for the weekend. She is on the train right now as I'm talking to you and she will be staying until Monday. So uh, I'm really excited to see her. I think it's been ages since I, since she was here just by herself because usually my two sisters, of course, do things together. And um, she's the one that I went to the yarn festival with, um, with in February. And we are going yarn shopping today. We are going to my local yarn store, which is um, Die Mercerie, which is the best yarn store in Munich, if I may say so. And I thought about it, and I think I haven't been back there since before Christmas. I'm not 100% sure if that's possible, but I actually think I haven't been there in six months, which is insane. And it's especially insane because I know that they have so many new things that I haven't seen before. Like all the new Madeleine Tosh colorways, um, the new um, Brooklyn Tweed yarn, and I can see some damage being done there today. But we'll see how that goes. But I'm picking up my sister at the train station at 12, and then, then we will head straight there because my sister is all up for that sort of stuff. And she's also the worst enabler in the world. Um, whenever I go some, somewhere with her and I'm trying to sort of pace myself and not buy too much yarn, she's like, Oh, but aren't you going to think you really wanted that skein? Aren't you really going to be sorry later? And she makes me buy all the yarn. And that's really fun for her. So we'll see how that goes. Um, she's also bringing her knitting. So I think we're going to hang out and knit for a little while. Um, of course, watch some soccer. And yeah, I think it's just going to be a lot of like outside time because the weather has been beautiful. Um... And I think it's supposed to stay that way. So I think it's going to be a really fun, relaxed weekend. And I'm really excited for it. But yeah, like I said, I wanted to record the podcast before she arrives. I know that she would probably like to be on the podcast. But it just is too difficult right now. Especially with microphones and setup and all that. So there you go. Um, That is pretty much it. Um, So... The only thing I can remember or think of now is um, please, if you're the winner of the prize, Caroline, please do get in touch and try to do that soon. Otherwise, you'll just have to wait a little bit for your package, which again is not a big deal. Um, besides that, I hope that you guys will continue to participate in the knit alongs in the Ravelry group on Instagram. I really, of course, enjoy seeing um, your comments pop up underneath each video and so on. So I just really, really appreciate that. Oh, that reminds me of one thing that I did want to mention. Um, you may have noticed that there are ads on my videos now. The truth is that I had enabled these ads in December and then YouTube took six months to actually work on it because apparently they had some sort of backlog of things and... God knows what. I I actually kind of eventually accepted that this was never going to happen, but suddenly they informed me that now I'm able to run ads on my videos. I didn't um, do that for a very, very long time because I I think, well, this is my hobby, and then 
lots of people said to me, you're crazy, you're putting in so much time and effort and it is work that you're doing and you should at least be doing that. So there are ads now. I have, I have not 100% decided what is going to happen with them in the future. If I do want to keep them, um, what it actually means, I'm not too sure. I'm just doing it for now and seeing what happens. So I hope you guys don't mind. Um, like I said, it might not be a permanent thing. I just kind of want to see how it runs. So let me know your opinions as well. Um, but there you go. So that is it for this episode. I think I have rambled and confused everyone enough. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you have so much fun with your knitting and I'll see you next week. Bye. Hey guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia. Today is Saturday the 18th? No, 17th? I think 17th of June, yes. 2018 and I'm coming to you from Germany um, and apparently I have forgotten how to podcast. Uh, <laughs>